Okay, welcome to the lockdown garden. I am the Starman. Now, I hope my last video was of help to you. I was talking about the Lyrid Meteor Shower, just giving you some very quick tips on how to see them and photograph them, and that, that was what it was all about, really. Now, um, welcome to any new subscribers as well, because I know I've had quite a few new subscribers in the last um, couple of weeks as well, so welcome. I hope you like the channel. Now, uh, I'm stuck in the garden here at the moment, so we're a little bit limited in what we can do. Um, now, you're watching this after the, the, um, the live in Meteor Share, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show how I'm going to set my camera up to hopefully capture some live in Meteors and at the same time capture a star trail like I showed you how to set one up in the last video and to also capture live with meteors as well at the same time and to also capture a time lapse I didn't mention that as well because when you do star trail photographs you can actually get three photographs in one so you get your star trail you might pick up some meteors and you also get a time lapse photograph as well which you can put put into a video so that's another good bonus so like I say I'm stuck in the garden at the moment um, so my options are a little bit limited in where I can point my camera so as you can see behind me I've got a big tree here so pointing that way I've got a big tree in the way if I point this way which is towards the east you can see there's a street light there um, <clears throat> towards the south not much better I've got a street light here and I've also got see these telegraph wires so I have a telegraph pole there with no end of wires coming off it and it's the same if I look towards the west you see these wires so I really um, I don't have a whole lot of clear sky to aim at so let's just have a little look around and see if I can find a nice clear part of the sky where I can aim my camera towards right okay so I've got right down in the far corner and I'm just going to show you my view looking back towards the east I showed you this view before but if I'm squeezing myself down into this corner I can get quite a bit of sky now I know I've got this tree here but the tree is quite interesting the only thing that bugs me is these telegraph wires but I don't think that there will be too much problem so I can I can have a shot facing this way and that's east over there so the effect of the stars will be the kind of straight kind of trails because the stars are going to rise in the east so we'll get fairly straight straightish kind of lines we'll sort of curve this way as you get more towards the southeast, so that's the kind of effect that we'll get if I have the camera set up looking this way. Right. Okay. So that's one option. It's not the best, but it's uh, it's one option. It's one way I can have one camera set up that way. But I can see a clearer part of the sky towards the back of my house. So let's have a little look at that. Right. Here I am. I'm, uh, this is my outhouse roof at the back of the house. Now look at all this clear sky behind me. This is probably the best part. Of the sky that I can see or the clearest most unobstructed part of the sky that I can actually see so I think um, if I was to say set a camera up on this roof I'll just show you the view that uh, we can expect to see okay so this is the roof I'd have the camera set up here um, I'll show you an example of that right now in fact I'll set it up right okay so I've just placed my camera on top of the roof there looking towards the north because north is this way and the north star is somewhere up here now let's have a look and see what we're going to see um, we're going to see something like this I want the foreground I want these houses here I'd like the foreground uh, interest in the photograph but the thing is is that um, I'm stuck with a 24mm lens on my camera it's a 24mm lens now normally I would have a landscape shot with a 14mm lens on I have all this all this sky here but I'm, but I'm just a little bit limited and I want to include the North Star which is somewhere right up here so the only way I'm going to be able to include the North Star is to turn the camera into portrait mode can you see I've got it in portrait mode rather than landscape mode because I want to include the North Star and the North Star is right up here and I won't be able to fit it in if I have the camera the other way around so that's just a little bit unfortunate but, but I think it'll make quite a good photograph anyway because we'll have we'll have this tree here we'll have these houses over it there's a here and hopefully we'll have the North Star up here and all the stars rotated around it and we'll have a nice star trail and hopefully if we get any fire coming across they're going to be coming 
across from this direction, streaking across this way. So uh, that's the kind of effect that I'm expecting to get. Okay, so that's uh, just giving you an idea of how I'm thinking of setting up my main camera. So that's going to be my main camera looking towards the north because it's the most unobstructed part of the sky that I can see from my garden. Um, the only thing that's in the way is a couple of telegraph wires, but I don't think that those telegraph wires are going to be too much of a problem. And I also mentioned that there's a street light as well in the distance, but that's too far away to have any kind of effect on my photographs. I'm going to be bumping up the ISO as much as I can. I think 800 is about the most I can get away with. And the exposures will probably be, I don't know, 15, maybe 10 to 15 seconds. But anyway, I'm going to wait till it gets dark now. And then we'll go back to the camera and I'll set it all up. I'll go through it all and we'll get that thing going. And then we'll see if we can get a really nice star trail at the end of it. And also might just catch some of these lyrid meteors. So let's wait till it gets dark and then we can set this camera up. Right, I hope you can see this okay. So I've got the information here on the back screen. Um, now, if you saw my last video, I actually went through the settings on that one, but I'm going to go through them again on this one. Now, normally for a star trail, I would normally have the ISO set fairly low to 200 or even to 100. But in this particular case, we're trying to capture meteors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the ISO up to 800. I mean, I could even boost it even more, but because I'm in the garden and because of street lights and all kinds of light pollution and all that kind of thing, I've got to limit the ISO because if I was out, say, in the country somewhere, I would probably boost the ISO up to 1600 or even more, you know, and I'd be able to catch more meteors because the sky would be much darker. So it's a case of um, a compromise, really, and hopefully 800 will get me, hopefully, a few more meteors. Now, luckily enough, my lens goes down to f2.8. It's a 24 to 70 f2.8. I'm, I'm out at 24 millimeters to capture as much sky as I can. ISO 800 f2.8, and the shutter speed that I'm going to use is going to be, let's see, 15 seconds. I did a test shot last night, and 15 seconds seemed to work out okay. Um, <clears throat> was a little bit bright, but able to darken it down. Now, the reason why you have to use a fairly high ISO to capture these meteors is because most of them they travel very fast across the sky and you might see one and think oh wow I've got that one on camera and then you look at your camera and you'll notice that maybe you have this faint line across your screen and you think well that didn't turn out to be much and the reason is is because they move so fast across the sky that they don't get a chance to register and that's one of the reasons why you have to have your ISO up fairly high so that the camera gets a chance to um, to capture the meteor. Now, you might be lucky and get a really, really nice fireball. Well, it, it probably doesn't matter too much what your ISO is because if you get a really amazing fireball, one of those slow burners that, that moves across the sky, then you'll probably capture that on any setting. So anyway, this is the way I've got it set up. Uh, let's go through this again. 15 seconds, ISO. 800 aperture f2.8 if you've got a lens that only goes down to say f4 then you're probably looking at 1600 to get a similar kind of effect as what i'm getting so what i'm going to do now is the settings are right all i need to do is turn the camera around because i'm, I'm doing this in portrait mode the reason for that is i want to capture the north star and i can't do it in landscape mode now i'm going to be having a multiple camera system up i've got another two cameras firing as well as this one this is going to be my main camera so let's set this one up on the roof now right okay so i nearly forgot what i need to do is i need to focus the camera first so before I put it up there, I need to focus on something bright. So Venus happens to be in the sky at the moment, and that's Venus there. It's looking very out of focus at the moment. So I'm going to use manual focus. So what I'll do is I'll zoom in on the live view screen like this, and we see Venus there. And then we'll grab hold of the focusing ring on the lens. This is how I focus on all my star shots. You might be able to get away with AF on a street light, a distant street light, or something like that. But this is the way I do it. And we keep moving the focus towards infinity until it gets as small as possible. If you go too far, it starts to bloat out again. Can you see? So I'm going to bring it back, bring it back to about, I would say about there. Now that for me is as small as Venus will get in the frame. So that's now in focus. So now we can take the camera onto the roof.
can see this, um, I'm now, I've now got the camera set up here and I've turned it into portrait orientation and I've framed, like I said, I've framed for the houses down here and for some of this row of houses up here as a nice foreground. Now I might need to adjust it a little bit. What I'll do is I'll probably just take a test picture now just to see how this comes out to see if it's ready for later on when it gets dark. Right, so I've just taken a test picture and I think, I think that this looks okay. I've got the foreground down here of the distant houses and I've also got some of this row of houses down here. Um, maybe I might just try and include a bit more of this side just to give it a bit more structure at the bottom. But uh, this is pretty much how the photograph is going to be. The North Star is going to be up here and we're going to get nice circular star trails. So I'm just going to readjust this a little bit. Right, okay, I think I'm happy with that now. I've got the foreground here and I've got a bit more of these houses here and I think I'm fairly happy with that now. So um, I'm all set up now for later on. So all I need to do now is get my timer and I went through this the other day. I'm basically going to set the camera up to take um, 15 second exposures and I'm, all I'm going to do with this is I'm not going to set the timer on, on, the, on the clock here I'm just going to lock the shutter down by using this button here so I press this button here and lock the shutter down and make sure that the camera is also set to frame advance as well so the camera will just take pictures all night or as long as the battery lasts Okay, so it's now the morning after the peak of the Lyrid meteor shower and you know what? I did not see a single meteor, not one, nothing at all. I can't believe it and I was looking for quite a while as well. I had all my camera, I mean I had my cameras set up and things like that and I was messing about with those and then I was going on Twitter. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, it's on the screen now. Um, doing all that sort of stuff. But in between I was spending quite a bit of time looking at the areas of the sky that I could that would clear different areas and I didn't see a single meteor, nothing at all, not even a satellite, nothing. Now that's a little bit disappointing but in a way I'm not too disappointed because what this is all about and why I do these videos is all about getting out there and, and making use of the night sky when it's really clear like it is at the moment and creating amazing star trails, which I'll have an amazing star trail out of what I did last night. So that's that's the main thing. Um, I'm sure that um, I'll get another chance to see some meteors on another night. And maybe even tonight, there's another chance tonight. The peak, maybe, the peak of the Lyrid maybe is not quite accurate. You know, maybe they've got it wrong. It could be tonight. So there's another chance tonight. So if you want to have another look tonight, you can try again. And certainly all the settings I've showed you for catching meteors apply to other meteor showers in the year. Now I do have some reasons why I think I might not have seen any meteors last night. Now there, is, there are a few reasons. Now one of them is that all meteor showers are based on the zenithal hourly rate which tells you how many meteors you can expect to see in the sky. Now this assumes that you can see the whole sky, so the whole dome all the way around. And it also assumes that the radiant of the meteor shower, which is where the meteors emanate from. Now last night they were coming from the constellation of Lyra, which was low in the east. It assumes that the radiant is directly overhead. So you've got all the sky, the radiant is directly overhead. So the meteors can come down all over the sky. They can zip down from the radiant all over the sky. The zenithal hourly rate and all meteor showers are based on that you can see the whole sky and the radiant is overhead now the lyrids i think it's up to 20 at the very most per hour now we try to calculate i can probably see at the very most in this garden um not even a quarter of the sky so if you divide the whole sky into a quarter and you divide 20 into quarter, then we come down to five meteors possible per hour. And then I'm saying I'm being generous there with a the quarter, it's probably only an eighth of the sky. So then we come down even more and we say, well, maybe I only had a chance of seeing maybe two to three meteors per hour. 
and um, you know even then I probably should have seen some because I was looking for long enough but anyway um, never mind and I hope the video has inspired you to have a little go at um, meteor photography, night photography and star trails because that's going to be the take out of this video. I'm going to have a nice star trail, certainly from the camera that I had set up on the roof there. If I do catch any meteors in it, I'll post them in a later video. So that's it for this video. Oh, I just want to give a big shout out to my friend Joseph Seeger. There's a link up here, I think somewhere, to his very, very good YouTuber very inspiring does great videos all sorts of photography videos and he's doing some great stuff at home under the lockdown as well so check out his channel and um, not sure what I'm going to be doing next but it'll be something uh, something to get you going something to get you out um, in the garden still under the lockdown probably check out some of my old videos as well see what I've been getting up to when I've not been locked in this garden it's not a bad thing really actually it's uh, quite nice really actually so anyway that's it um, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.